This lesson is on properties of real numbers. The goal is to identify properties of real numbers. What you should learn by the end of this lesson is that the set of real numbers has several special subsets and properties that are related in particular ways. All right, here's the diagram of real numbers. And real numbers are basically all the numbers that we know. They are the natural numbers or number counting numbers. That's what we learned when we went, went to kindergarten. If you add the zero to natural numbers, then they become whole numbers. If you add negative numbers, they become integers. And then when you add fractions and decimals, and they become rational numbers. The one set, they're still real numbers, but the one set that's out here all by itself are irrational numbers. They're things like pi and any square root of a number that is not a perfect square. So if you have the square root of 4, the answer is 2. That's a real number. But the square root of 2 is a number that doesn't repeat. You can't make it into a fraction. It goes on forever, just like pi. So they are called irrational numbers. All right, here are the properties of real numbers that we're going to be looking at. We have, we're really not going to look at closure, but we're going to look at commutative, associative, identity, inverse, and distributive. All right, basically a clo the closure property says when you take two real numbers and you add them or multiply them, the answer is a real number. And it says that the only one example of when it's not, and we'll get into this later on, is if you take the square root of negative 1, you get an imaginary number. We'll be looking at, at imaginary numbers a little later on. The commutative property says that if you take two numbers and add them, or numbers and multiply them, that you can do it in any order, and the answer doesn't change. 2 and 3 is 5, 3 and 2 is 5. 2 times 3 is 6, 3 times 2 is 6. That is the commutative property. Remember, it only works if you're adding or if you're multiplying. The associative property states if that if you add or if you multiply groups of numbers, three, usually three is what you're going to see um, on a test or in a lesson, but that you can group them together or put parentheses around two of them, any two, and it doesn't change the answer. And you'll see some of those. And it applies to all real numbers. The identity property, which you may not have heard before, for all real numbers if you're, when you're adding is zero. The identity property just states, we're not going to change the answer. I can take zero and add it to any number all day long and it doesn't change the answer. In multiplica multiplication, the identity, multiplicative identity is one. I can have to multiply any number by one to get the same answer. I can't multiply by zero and get the same answer. The inverse property says for every non-zero real number, the inverse property is another number called the inverse number. And we think of that as either being, if it's a positive number, the inverse is negative, a negative number. But it is another number, and it's called the inverse number. All right, here's your first practice problem. Which equation shows the commutative property of multiplication? The commutative property states that it doesn't matter the order in which uh, you multiply or add. So I'm looking for two numbers or two letters that are just switched around. 
if I look at this one, they're just A and B, and I'm reversing them to B and A, times A. So that is the commutative property of multiplication. Practice problem two, which equation shows the associative property of multiplication? Remember, you can always go look at the, your notes, or you can always go back and listen to the video. Practice problem two shows, says which equation shows the associative property. Associative, you're going to see parentheses on both sides of the equal sign because it's a series. This one has parentheses on both sides of the equal sign and we're, the letters K, M, and N are on both sides. So which property of multiplication is shown below? This question asks which property of multiplication is shown. I have a set of parentheses on this side, no parentheses on this side. I'm kind of separating it out. That means I am using the distributive property. Practice problem four, which property of addition is shown? Practice four says, ask which property of addition is shown. I'm adding zero to C and coming up with C. That is the identity property. Practice problem five. What value of T makes this addition sentence true? Hint, use the properties of addition. Yes, it is the associative property of addition, but just look at the numbers and see which one is missing that would make that sentence true. Practice five, ask which value of t makes this addition sentence true. I have, this is an associative, I'm using grouping. I have three numbers, 89, 87, 52. And on this side, I have 87 and 52. So T must be the number that is missing. And if that's the case, the number that is missing is 89. So T has to equal 89. Practice six, what value of Z makes this addition sentence true? Notice there are only two numbers on the left, three on the right, what would I have to add to these to make to get the same answer? Hint, hint, think of the identity property. The final practice problem is what value of Z makes this addition sentence true? I have, again, it's, we're going to look and see it. I have two numbers over here. I have three over here, but I notice that the two numbers are the same. So what number can I add to not change anything? Well, the only number that I can add where it doesn't change is Z has to equal zero. Da, 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 da. And that's the end of the first lesson. Good luck. That's the end of the first lesson. You're gonna do your six practice problems on Kia, and then you'll do your assignment in IXL. Good luck.